This video is on how to graph a step function. A special type of piecewise function is called a step function. The graph of a step function is a series of horizontal line segments that resemble steps or a staircase. Each horizontal segment represents a constant value on a given interval, and each interval has a different value. Here's an example of what a step function looks like. So you can see that we have different steps, and it does kind of look like a staircase, and my table of values looks a little bit different than it does for a normal function. Because notice that we have intervals here for x and just plain old values for y. Notice that on the interval, 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 1, which would be this interval right here. Notice that right there, y is equal to negative 1. That means that for every x value between 0 and 1, including 0, but up to and not including 1, y is equal to negative 1. And on the interval, 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2, which would be this right here, y is equal to 0. So for every value where x is 1 or a little bit greater all the way up to 2 but not including 2, my y value is going to be equal to 0 and that's reflected in the table over here. Notice that y is never going to be equal to negative 1 half. Right here y would be a negative 1 half. This is why it's called like a step function because my y value steps or jumps from negative 1 right here, it jumps up to y equals 0 up here. So the domain of this step function is all real numbers, notice x can be anything, but its range is all integers. So there's no fractions, there's no decimals, it's just y is going to equal negative 2, y can equal negative 1, y can equal 0, y can equal 1, but not anything in between. Here's an example. A parking garage charges $5 per hour or each fraction thereof. So we need to make a table of values to represent the situation and then graph it. So parking garage, $5 per hour. So that means, or any fraction thereof. So that means that if I park for a half an hour, I'm not going to pay $2.50. I have to pay a full $5. So as soon as I pull into the parking garage, I owe them $5 for as long as I stay up to and including that first hour. If I stay there an hour and five minutes, I'm going to owe them for two hours because that's a fraction of the next hour. So maybe the easiest way to do this before we make our table of values, maybe it would be easier to go ahead and graph this. So let's make this our time. And that's in terms of hours. And this is going to be my cost and that's in terms of dollars. <clears throat> and for time, I'm going to just count by ones. And then cost, since it's $5, I'm going to go ahead and count by fives going up here. Okay, so when my time is zero, when I first pull into the parking lot, I don't owe anything. But as soon as I'm in the parking lot, I owe $5. So that's going to look like this. So an open circle here because if my time is zero, if I'm not in the parking garage, I don't owe them anything. But for that whole, up to that first hour, I owe them $5. Then, if I stay just one minute more than an hour, it's going to jump up to $10. And then for that whole next second hour, it's going to cost $10. Then if I stay two hours and one minute, it's going to jump up to 15 and then you can kind of start to see the pattern here, and so on. Okay, so if I stay, so for example, if I stay 3 hours and 15 minutes, that would be right about here, it's going to cost me $20. So, remember our x's are going to be intervals, so let's describe this interval of x. So 0 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 1. And on, at that time, my y is going to be equal to 5. Let's describe the next interval here. 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 2. And on that interval, y is equal to 10. My next, 2 is less than x, 
which is less than or equal to 3, and y is equal to 15, and 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 4. I have no idea why that's jumping around. <laughs> is equal to 20. Okay, so there's an example of what uh, the cost at this parking garage would look like. <clears throat> One of the best known step functions is called the greatest integer function and it looks like this. f of x is equal to, and you can see these kind of double square brackets, the greatest integer of x, I think is how you read that. It's defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x or a way that makes a little more sense to me, the greatest integer that is not greater than x. So for example, let's take a look at a couple examples here. Let's go, um, we'll do the first one here. So when x is between negative 2 and negative 1, including negative 2 but not including negative 1, that would be this interval right here, y is equal to negative 2. So for any value of x that's between and including negative 2 and up to but not including negative 1, then the value of y is going to be equal to negative 2. For any value, let's see what did I describe here? Yeah, so then for any value on this interval right here between negative 1 and 0, including negative 1 and not 0, the y value would be equal to negative 1. So for example, if I were to do the greatest integer function on the value 1.7, which would be something right about here, that means what is the largest integer, remember no fractions, no decimals, that is not bigger than 1.7. So that would be 1, because normally I would look at 1.7 and round it up to 2, but that's bigger than 1.7, so I need the biggest integer that's not bigger than 1.7, and that integer would be 1. So that would be represented on the graph somewhere right about here. Okay, one more example here. The greatest integer function working on negative 1.5 means what is the largest integer, what's the biggest integer that's not bigger than negative 1.5? negative 1.5 would be right here, and that would be negative 2. So the greatest integer function working on negative 1.5 is equal to negative 2. So in this video we took a look at step functions, kind of described what they are and what saw what they look like on a graph. Interesting thing about step functions is that the domain, your x value, is an interval. It's not just a given value and your y value, your range value, are going to be integers, nothing in between. Uh, we graphed a step function and then we took a look at the greatest integer function which defines the greatest integer that is that is not greater than x.